Hey, hey, hey. Hi everyone. Andy here from Andy's Astro. Got a lot to talk about today because we've made a lot of changes here to the to the rig and the gear. And I guess the first thing that you might notice is we've got a new mount. Yep. The beautiful old tack has gone to a new home and we've replaced it with this Ioptron CEM70G, G for guider. And it's sitting on its uh, Ioptron tripe here, which I already had. So it's a pretty cool piece of gear. I gave it first light last night. And I'd have to say I'm, I'm impressed. But first of all, you might notice it's an ungainly looking thing. It's like, what the? So it pivots around this axis here, which changes the center of gravity a bit to how most normal mounts would appear. And then it, uh, the deck rolls around like this. Now in here where my finger is, there's a little guide camera. And that's a 121 millimeter focal length guide camera. And you know what? Last night I ran this uh, imaging run as a first light test. And this baby's running at about 700 millimeters focal length. And I had perfectly round stars and it was guiding within half an arc second. How good's that? I mean, seriously, that was like, wow, technology. So I was pretty impressed. It's also got homing sensors in it, which means it's now compatible and can work in full automation mode using a program called Voyager. And that's the other thing we want to talk about. But before I get to that, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm excited. New kid, new toys. Um, you might notice this little blue box on top here. This is a Pegasus Ultimate Power Box. And what that's doing now with one power source driven from the bottom here, that's now distributing power to the dew heaters and it's distributing power to the camera. And basically it's a, a very clever system that delivers power wherever you want it. Here I am looking for the uh, for the clutch because I just am so not used to this thing yet. But there we are, good. Um, but the Pegasus box is great because, you know, if the camera ever fails, I can just deactivate it remotely, disconnect it via the USB, and then refire it and it's great. It means I don't have to go sort of stomping out in the middle of the night and unplugging cables and recharging cables and all that kind of stuff because the ultimate aim is to take all this to a dark site in the country and leave it there at a friend's property with a roll-on roll-off roof. So we're working towards that, which is why all of this needed a different and more reliable operating system. Now, as you know, I've been using Stellamate. And Stellamate and I have been hmm, challenging each other for the last two years. And I finally had everything working perfectly. And when I say perfectly, it would focus, it would track, it would plate solve, it would change filters, it would meridian flip by itself. It would do all those things for me. And then a mate introduced me to this new program called Voyager. And I thought, well, okay, what's that? But here's the cool thing about Voyager that really hooked me onto it. The focusing with Stellamate was always a little bit hit and miss, shall we say. It would eventually do it, and when I say eventually, there was no option to run uh, this almost full frame camera at low quality, high download speed doing a focusing run. You were just stuck. You either had set it up for low quality download speed, that's it, or high quality download speed when you're imaging. There was no option for do one and then do the other. So as a result, with the download speed on this camera, a focusing run would take 10 minutes. Yep, you heard that right, 10 minutes. Did my head in. So when my buddy introduced me to Voyager and we hooked it all up to this, it focused in like a minute, maybe a minute and a half, totally. And that included the way Voyager works. It, you go to your target, let's say we're pointing at Carina Nebula, and then you say, okay, I wanna do a focus run. 
a Voyager will then go to a known star in the database. Focus on that very quickly. Plate solve it. Plate solve its way back to your target and carry on with your imaging and it'll do all of that in less than a minute and a half. It was amazing. Now in addition to that, it just works. It works brilliantly. Reliable, solid, can't crash it. And there's a host of other really cool features like the um, web dashboard where you can exactly plan your imaging because it'll give you a little image of your field of view and then it'll lay an Aladdin star chart behind that. So you can orientate your target, you can line it up this way, you can make your mosaics, you can do all this clever stuff. And Voyager will just go, yeah, okay. Um, it'll set you up with the opportunity to do that with a bunch of fail safes built into it so that if this fails, it'll do this. If this happens, it'll do that. And it'll eventually just um, park itself in the morning and so forth. So even if, if clouds come over during the night, which is really, really cool, because that happens a lot here in Melbourne, um, it'll keep trying to image. Meanwhile, the ioptron will keep tracking. It'll keep everything going happily until eventually the clouds have gone and it'll go, oh, it's clear now. I'll just start imaging again. Amazing, amazing. But that meant, sorry, Stellamite, it had to go and get replaced. I'll just walk around here. Bye. A NUC. And a NUC, in this case, is a little headless computer. Yes, it's Windows. Mm -hmm. I bit the bullet finally and I accepted that if you want to do this stuff remotely, you need to get something that'll drive Windows. In this case, this little NUC. Now, this isn't a big, expensive machine. It's an i5 processor. It's got a little hard SSD in it. It's got 16 mega RAM in case I want to, you know, run, oh, let's see, Photoshop. <laughs> Um, but it'll do everything I want it to do, and I can drive it remotely. So Voyager on the NUC with the ioptron, powered correctly, working through all this. It's amazing. It just works. And so many times previously in various other incarnations of devices, you'd you know you'd have to get up in the middle of the night and fix something, or you'd wake up in the middle of the night and something had aborted and collapsed or not working properly the way you want it to or you'd be chasing your tail trying to figure out you know why hasn't something connected tonight everything with this system now just bloody works oh sorry sorry kids everything in the system now just works and i'm really 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 amazed and delighted had a lot of help from a buddy of mine who uh you know quite technically savvy and uh patient with my demands but um gee whiz it's all working beautifully now. So next step is to get all of this eventually off to that dark site where I can just, you know, sit comfortably in the lounge room and um, watch Netflix while the thing's doing its thing in, in the country. Anyway, that's probably enough for me for now. I hope your imaging's going well. Thanks for following along. Thanks for subscribing. Give us a like down there if you, uh, if you think this is valuable to you. Check out Voyager. Um, the, uh, the guy who writes it's very responsive, um, does it, you know, he'll, he listens, he talks to you, um, you know, gets back to you really fast. So that's a, good, that's a good thing. Yes, you have to pay for it. No, it doesn't cost very much. Yes, it's great value for money. <laughs> Sorry, it sounds like a plug. Well, I guess it is. Um, and of course, these Optron mounts, pretty damn cool, I have to say. And you can get one of those from my buddies at Sidereal Trading and uh, they'll look after you. So just ask for Paul and Diego and they're the guys. So that's it. That's it for me. I'll pop the latest image in the credits, uh, sorry, in the comments down below, <laughs> and you can check that out. I'll put the guiding graph from last night so you can see what this thing did. Uh, for your own reference, you can check that out as well. And uh, keep smiling, folks. Bye for now.